there guys, welcome to Corin's Orchids and Sweden. We just entered our rainy season. Ah, every other year it occurs in July. <laughs> Five weeks of rain. <laughs> and yeah, at the same time as I just started my vacation. <laughs> yeah, it never fails does it, but anyway, we had a kind of dry season, so I think it will be enough for this year with sun, yeah. A little bit too much sun. I was complaining at the time as well, so... Well... I don't need to exaggerate every year. Uh, but I guess that's the way it is in this country. But, um... Yeah. The orchids on the balcony are doing fine. I just... They're starting to plump up, yeah? Cristada. Looking better. Purparada. Looking better and better. Huh. Look at the um, King of Taiwan. <laughs> Look at its games. Received some good light. All of a sudden turned purple. Yeah, indication on what the flowers, the color of the flowers will look like. So um, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> and my amaryllis are growing really nicely. Yeah. Put a couple of Angrecoid orchids out on the balcony as well. This is the um, mm, good growing, past growing Angrecum crestwood. It reached a decent size now, so I think it could be able to flower. So, uh, a period, a little bit cooler period, will encourage it to bloom, to start its buds. Yeah, so let's look what happened on my. Angrecum sescapidale bosserii. It's my king! Way too early, but it sure did encourage it to bloom. Or to spike, yeah? The cooler temperatures. Uh, expanding root system, really. Both sitting in a uh, semi-hydro, so yeah, they're doing fine in it. But it usually blooms, open up its buds in November, so this one will be a, an early blooming bud. It's fine by me. It's totally fine, yeah? This is the uh, Banda Cerulea from Curlin. It's fully open, open up today. Um, could be um, seven centimeters, three inches across, yeah? Not as wide as the hybrids, of course. The similar hybrids, but uh, it's still a very, very gorgeous flower spike. No, uh, without scent. I like it. First time blooming, six flowers. I think we shall be satisfied with that. It's a really, really small sized plant. Look. Uh, yeah, almost the size of a very, very large, uh, tall uh, human hand, so. Sitting really nicely there in the stand, so in this boss. Watered a couple of times a week now when when it's drier. So uh I guess it needed the warmth. Yeah. And a little bit more sun. Normal sun. <laughs> Better sun like than this, so it tried to bloom twice, tried to spike, but it blasted its spikes. So um this is great news, I think. Um, here's the, um, mm, what's his name? Vanduk Stylus Celestis Blue. I'm just waiting for it to start spiking. A friend of mine is in full bloom right now, at the moment, so it surely is mature enough to bloom. So, I mean, look, it's been blooming several times before, so, yeah. It's been doing really well since I got it. It surprises me that it won't put out any spikes, but we shall see. Maybe later on. And sitting next to it, it's the uh, Vanda Miniada from Curlin. It bloomed on two good spikes. You can see them here, all dried out a few months ago. So, um, yeah, late winter bloomer, I think, early or late. I don't, I don't, I don't really remember, but uh, in winter. So that's great. Yeah, and this new Vanda 
which I got from uh, 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 Curlin one month ago, perhaps almost. Vanda Crown Fox Golden Dawn. That is settling. Starting to, um, yeah, create a new, good new root. Uh, I think I need to cut the little bag here to the side in order for it to um, just stop growing there. Now starts to branch its roots. Yeah, that went kind of fast, so yeah, it doesn't hate it in here. I do have a couple of large vandas. As for my tricolors, suavis and the regular form, doing great, I think, in charcoal. There's some gravel on top, yeah. And here's a little tray with my smaller ones. Uh, Renanthera, uh, Monochica, there. And a couple of hybrids here. I'm going to repot these guys together with you to, uh, yeah, today. It's really time to address them, I think. So why not do it now? It's as good as a time as any. Let's bring them into my kitchen, yeah? Hey, hey, before we start repotting the vandas, the small vandas, we're going to look at this one. It's a new purchase from Svarte Okedin. Kind of pricey normally. Vanda Feut... <laughs> Vanda Feutida. Or however that's pronounced, I'm not sure. Feutida, Feutida. That's a matter. It's a lovely one. Uh, interesting colour combination as well. I liked it a lot. I really did. Um, liked it a lot. I saw it as a grown-up plant at, um, I think, Orchis Deluxe or so, and that was quite, kind of pricey. Not overpriced, but pricey, <laughs> still. So, and as that was the only plant I wanted, I needed to uh, uh, pay about €25 Euro for a uh, shipment, and that would be too much. That's why I included this one, in a little bit larger order, which you aren't going to see today. Yay. And it's not so bad. 12.95 euro. Three years to flowering size. But, um, yeah. As I said, it's a little bit um, more expensive one. But still very lovely. I like to have keep a band of young plants. I think they're really cute and they grow quite fast for, for the time being. So, uh, so... This is not a bad size one for being a young band. Sometimes they are this small. <laughs> Already sitting in bark. So, mushel seashells. Um, so this one is going to be potted up in exactly the same medium as the other ones. Sitting next to them and be treated exactly the same way. So, yeah. Lovely to have it. Well, I also got something else. Well, um, I started to, yeah, I started thinking. And I found that I, yeah, the way I was thinking was really, really silly. Um, I could get a good, 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 very, very, very expensive frag, for example. But I couldn't get a little bit of um, hydrogen peroxide. Yeah, mostly due to stubbornness, yeah. But I mean, I remember the times when I could get 300 milliliters for three, yeah, around three euros. So I mean, uh, I just, yeah, I just felt it was, yeah, uh, you know, you know, you know. So I went to the pharmacy on Sunday. I really, really checked which pharmacies uh, would be open on Sunday. And I really, really planned my schedule. Yeah, 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 went there. Yeah, out of stock. So I just, no, I need to order it online. Took about two days to deliver. So here it is, hydrogen peroxide. It could be uh, kind of suitable to uh, put on crown rot or stem rot on perhaps, yeah, any kind of orchid. But mostly I found that my uh, phalaenopsis are kind of suffering from time to time. They're really, really sensitive to uh, be hit by that uh, fungus disease bacteria. One liter or so. I got it for about 17 euros, so now we're getting there. Yeah, it's starting to look like it's all price level, so yeah. Do I need to put a little sprayer? This one, for example, and just add it. Put it there, and yeah, you know. Anyway, put it aside for now. 
Here is the famous folder Vergustalius TSS Taiwan Gandarva. Looking great, I. Yeah, it's only dust, so it needs to be showered. Uh, what did I say? Flowering size? Are you kidding me? Yeah, could be. Transferta, the 25th of November, 21. So, one and a half years ago. It couldn't be flowering size, could it? Look. Banneke stylus. Yeah. Maybe. I think it looks nice, at least. Healthy and nice. And I reported it in, yeah, in November. Same year. One and a half, almost two years ago. So, it really, I can see, it really needs a repot. The medium is starting to break down. I don't think it's really liking it anymore but still it's got a little bit of happy sap and not a little a uh, heavy amount of happy, happy sap so yeah mm. and it arrived in moss so it was really adapted to be sitting in the water retentive medium so um so i figured why not keep it that way but i think this has been too dry for it on the other hand so i put it up in Bark, charcoal, and rock wool, yeah. It doesn't look that great. Yeah, it would be better. Looks terrible. Yeah. No wonder it doesn't bloom for us. Look. Yeah. Hmm. Wonderful root system, isn't it? This rock wool, which sucks out the uh, um, the water from the roots, if not kept moist at all times, yeah, it will have the opposite effect. So, um, if you know how to deal with it, it's a very, very great medium. But if you don't, or if you forget, as in this case. Yeah, the route on a really, really thin ice, yeah. So, better know what you're dealing with and how to use it. It's going to be much better from now on, so. And as it's summertime, oh yeah, middle of summer, yeah, it still has got a lot of time to recover and expand its root system again so I'm not so worried this guy on the other hand I'm gonna put aside and let it dry a bit until it's time for it to be sprayed with the hydrogen peroxide 3% yes let's turn the page ah, the tricolors we already looked at a little bit um, yeah, that's cerulescence. Cerulescence, yeah, yeah. Here it is. Band of cerulescence. Also very small one. Flowering size. How can that be? I was gonna repot tiny bandas together with you guys today, but these are actually flowering size ones. No taller than my hand, so well. Hmm. October 22. Some of us really doubted it to be flowering size when I unboxed it. So, uh, well, needs a refresh. Looking better. Green roots all over. Ah, <laughs> this one. Vanapaki has grown uh, <clears throat> tremendously well. <laughs> look, I can barely catch it on camera. So, look. Whoa, this one's going to be a really, really tall one, so it needs to grow well and fast. Uh, doesn't say, I think it had a couple of years to flowering size, around three, three years. In November 21, so one and a half years ago. Uh, I put down a few notes, a small little vigorous plant in bark. Yeah, that's how it arrived. So, yeah, that's great. And I also have a Renanthera monochica. Two pieces in the same. 
and I got it a little bit over one year ago from Orchid Samoa in April last year. It was splendid, I think. And I've never reported it, so uh, I think it's about time to be reported. Yes. Look at the amount of um, algae built up to the walls, to the sides, I mean. So, yeah. I'm going to replicate it. I mean, a little bit of uh, perlite could be suitable for that one. The Renanthera, yes. And my new one, my new little Vanda Fuetida. Yeah, it's just been watered, so it's time to repot it. Fuetida, Fuetida, <laughs> forget it, yeah. A little bit of musha cork for it. Doesn't seem to be any um, moss in it, but you never know. So it's adapted to be sitting in kind of small grade water retentive medium. So that's great, that's great. Yeah, lovely root system on this guy. Nothing dead at all. Perfect. I think uh, my root system, some of my old ones, uh, partially dead since I didn't water them enough. So there's going to be changes. Certainly will be. Meanwhile, I'm going to put it in into a bucket of water. Root Ultra Plus for explosive healthy rooting. Yay! Yeah. Whoops! Just a few little drops, yeah. So we can sit there for a while. Let us take a little look at the Venanthera Monochica. If the algae no longer eats up all of the nutrients, could be an advantage, couldn't it? Never reported, so hmm, looking kind of great for having been sitting in uh, coconut tusk fiber. Kind of sort of um, acidic medium, so to speak. Huh. Not much dead. Hmm. Fabulous root system, so. Not even this root. Still alive, yeah? So that's great. I'm gonna soak it, soak these guys. Yeah, I'm not gonna separate them. I don't need two of them. So, my favorite, Van Paki. Let us look at his roots. Yeah, coming out from underneath. So, shouldn't be all that bad. Let's just see two that we get them out in one piece, which uh, I don't think we will. This is branching out, then it's not gonna fit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, um, I need to do um, something, yeah. Funny handling, but um, I'd rather keep the root, yeah. I got several pots out there, far too many out of my balcony, anyway, so. I want the root more badly than I want the pot, so. Yeah. Now we're going to get it out in, perhaps, whoops, yeah, one piece. All its new root tips intact. So. Yeah, great. Hmm. <laughs> As a matter of fact, all of its roots are intact. Yeah, doing ex extremely well. Yeah. Hmm, that's great. Great news. So, um,. Oh, that one liked it. I'm gonna put this guy in the nutrient bath as well. So. And Van der Cerulesen's in a wider pot. Yes. Never reported it, I believe. It feels kind of slippery, its roots here. Yeah. Uh, since I never reported it, yeah, look. A lot of stuff is not really alive, so... Um, but that shall be changed. Yeah. Loads of new root tips, so 
It shall be okay. I'm gonna cut bad pieces away. Decent root system, I think, still. Yeah, that's great. So now I think we're getting there. I've cleaned off all of the root systems. Looking great. Cut off the small, tiny pieces of dead roots. I think uh, overall, we kind of have the orchids, yeah? So I must have been doing something right uh, with my treatment. Hmm. I'm um, searching out for, uh, really hard for a uh, THLED fitting, yeah, smaller fitting, perhaps a little, little tiny, teeny, weeny fitting, so it won't take up all that much space than my grey ones, height-wise, so um, I need a tinier, smaller, slimmer fitting, and a couple of more LED, T8 LED lights. I found those to be uh, very, very, very great, yeah. So I need to get a couple of more and see too that I give all my uh, highlight orchids the very best light sources they can possibly get. So with that parameter out of the way, um, I can search further for something else to make any further adjustments, so to speak, regarding water routine and fertilizing routine. So... Um, that's my next project. This reporting, I'm not going to use any kind of rock wool. So there's going to be a couple of uh, medium grade pieces of charcoal instead to the bottom. And I switched um, pots for them instead of um, this tiny one. It's going to be one size up. So yeah, on each and every one of them. This one is wider, not so deep. Fits perfectly. This one as well. Same kind of setup, so I'm gonna be treated simultaneously. Very same water routine, um, very same shelf, very same light source, therefore. <laughs> so let's start with this little guy. Add a couple of pieces of charcoal bottom for drainage. Keep it from getting far too soggy. Goes for all of them. And that's got uh, slits to the side, so this is going to be uh, perfect for it. So this is one or, one or two sizes up. <clears throat> but it's new medium. Shall not um, hold the moisture as great as this old one, so... Um, I think it will be perfect. And this part has even got a couple of holes to the bottom where I'm most uh, worried that it will be too wet to its feet. My uh, small to medium grade swarte box. It's been soaking in water for a few hours, ready to be used. Yes. Mix it up. Of course, it's going to be easier to use it if it's uh, dry, but. Well, it's not. <laughs> so, it's a perfect size, yeah. Perfect weight bulk. Add the uh, perlite. Makes it airy and holds the moisture at the same time, yeah. <laughs> that's a fun equation, but that's how it is. I found it to be really, really, really beneficial. But uh, at the same time, it looks like scale, so <laughs> better not confuse it, but... I'm not so prone to uh, getting scale, so um, I don't think, well, no worries, yeah. So, goodly good. Let's just get started and do it nice and smoothly. Yep. And a packy. The small guy, which turned out to be a good grower. Loveliest of blooms. I hope one day I shall be able to show you guys 
Christmas blues. Should have had, I think. I I, I, I didn't remember. I forgot to uh, write it down in my notes, I saw. But um, I think it's got three years to flower in size, so yeah. It had when I got it done. They always uh, exaggerate. <laughs> when I say three, it's about five, so yeah. So now I think it's three years left. <laughs> Otherwise, nobody would buy it. <laughs> Five years is a very long time to wait for an orchid to bloom. Yeah, but I do need some. I do need to be patient, or, as in my case, <laughs> buy loads of orchids. And meanwhile, you need to forget about one three. It's got three years to flowering size, and all of a sudden it flowers for you. Yeah, that's my method. <clears throat> yeah, but it works. Keeps me busy, really busy. Yeah, that's great. This certainly is great. Van a packy. Still a very young plant, so it needs its moisture. So, and I usually forget to order them, so this will be fine. Same goes for the uh, Renanthera Monochica. Yay. Tap it a bit. Uh, yeah. It's a little bit more difficult since there are two pieces in here, but yeah. I can adjust them better when I stake them up later on. So, maybe some fresh medium will get it going and make it take off blue wise. But um, I believe it's flowering season is in spring, or is it? Yeah, it should be in spring, so normally I've seen these guys in bloom in spring, so I think we passed that period, but um, maybe next year. I won't put it up um, far too uh, low down in case of some uh, stem rot or such. It's better to uh, keep it a little bit up, a little bit, yeah. At least so the tapping was successful so looks great here yeah frosted to keep the algae build up away so the same procedure goes for the rest of them now you know the uh the routine i'm going to use and the setup and so on and so forth and there's going to be an update in a couple of months time i, I just need to write it down so um so i don't forget it well i hope you like this video but why not subscribe it's free of charge so yeah until i see you next time take care talk to you soon